Hello and thanks for joining me again. Today we're going to do a quick beginner's lesson in how to draw a wine bottle. Um, so just a very basic shape that's a good place to start if you're thinking of perhaps having a go at doing a little still life. Still lives are a very good way to practice your drawing when you're beginning. Um, good observational drawing, it makes you look, makes you concentrate and we've all got sort of objects around the house that we can just pop into a little still life and have a practice with our drawing. So I'm just going to draw a wine bottle. Now, although we're looking at it straight on like that, we've still got, it's still a circular object. We've got a circle there, circle there, and just because we're not actually looking at that circle flat on doesn't mean it's not still there. So the best way to achieve the shape of that is to draw an ellipse. And when you draw an ellipse, I'll pop the bottle up there out of the way. So when you draw an ellipse, I'll just do some practice ones over here. Um, you don't draw with your wrist and don't have your hand tight and these muscles tight and don't try and draw like this in one line. Get your whole arm moving, move from your shoulder and your neck. Um, stand at an easel if you can, that's a, a good way. But draw with your arm, not with your, just your hand and, certain, and just your wrist. That makes you drawing very, very stiff. Draw with your whole arm, get a nice big sheet of paper and just have a practice at drawing some ellipses. Like I say, don't try drawing like this in a full line. Just keep giving it a go, drawing some nice big ellipses. Okay, so if you look at your bottle, uh, the first ellipse you'll see depends which angle, whether you're looking down on your bottle, I'm looking slightly up on it now, when you, whether you're looking down on your bottle or whether you're looking straight on or slightly upwards, um, it's going to depend how much of the ellipse you actually see. But even if you can't see it, it is still there. So we'll just start with the lid and just put that there and then we'll look how big the base is in, in comparison and put another ellipse down there. Now, if you wanted, you could get a ruler and put a line through so that you knew that that was going to be straight. I'm doing it all by eye because I prefer to work by eye uh, and then correct later. But if you wanted, you could get your ruler, put a nice line down and work your bottle into that line just to make sure that it was all even. Okay, so if you look at the length of the neck of the bottle now compared to the rest of the bottle, it's probably about there somewhere. So put another ellipse in where the end of the neck is and then another one the same size as this about here somewhere so now on your paper you should have a nice straight line two ellipses the same size there and two more the same size here and then just get your pencil or your charcoal in this case and join those two together take this line up to this one this one up to this one and there is your bottle emerging okay so then you can start and correct it if you like get rid of that line at the top get rid of the line and that could be the liquid inside so you could leave that there and that of course it's glass so you're going to see some of that through okay now this actually is a bit more rounded than I got it, so now you can start fine tuning it. It's rounded, nice and straight down there, and rounded in there. And then we could maybe put the label on. And again, that's an ellipse shape. So get your arm moving, get your shoulder moving. And that's where your label comes to. You can actually see that because it's it's a clear glass and we can see around here and we can imagine there isn't actually any liquid in it but we could imagine there's some liquid in it and the liquids perhaps come into there and then if we look at the top top comes to about there somewhere and it's got some ridges on it it's a screw top one not a cork so there we go okay so you can see how mine's actually a tiny little bit lopsided because like I said I didn't do a rule line down the centre which you might do so it's actually coming out a bit more on one side than the other but you can soon correct that 
This is why I like working in charcoal because you can just rub it out with your finger and, and play and build up a shape that way. And then once you've got your shape in, you can then start and put some shadows in. Very difficult with glass um, because there's so many reflections and shadows in there. So try and simplify it. Look for the most obvious shadows. Um, on this particular one, I've got the light all down this side. And again with your shadow, make it go in the same direction as the as the bottle. And then you can smooth it off with your finger. And if you lose any of those lines and you want to crispen them up again, you can just put them back in with your charcoal. And there's quite a dark shadow underneath on the table where the bottle's sitting. And that just gives it that impression of the bottle actually sitting on the table as well. Okay, so you could build that up and build that up. Keep reinforcing some of those lines. Um, keep reinforcing some shadows. You could use some chalk if you wanted to get the highlights back. Look where the highlights are on the glass. You could use a, an eraser to get those back or you could use some chalk. But that's just a very simple way to do a bottle. And you can do the similar kind of thing with your wine glass. So if you get your glass, you've got one round there, another there and then the two in the centre. So you'd start off, do a nice big, put that out of the way, nice big round for the top, slightly smaller one at the bottom base, two for the stem and just join them all together and that's your wine glass emerging and then you can see how you could build that up perhaps put some liquid in again and then start and put your shadows in so get going with those ellipses get a lovely big piece of paper uh, it can be an old scrap piece of paper it doesn't have to be anything expensive and get a big stick of charcoal or a nice big pencil and just get your arm moving and get drawing some ellipses and that'll free you up a little bit and then just practice and practice with putting your shading in um, and keep building it up and building it up and don't worry about making a mess because like I say you can just get those lines back if you rub them out you can soon crisp them up again. Okay so have fun with that perhaps get two or three little objects put them all together and make yourself a little still life composition. If you've enjoyed watching this video and found it useful and you want to see some more of my tutorials then please do subscribe below and of course you can pop some comments in the comments box if you've got anything you'd like to ask. Okay so thanks for watching and bye for now.